Hello, welcome to DIY is my happy place. I'm Amy and I'm so excited about today because we are going to be doing charcuterie board. Now, the charcuterie board that I'm gonna make is gonna be under $25 and it's gonna be made with Dollar Tree supplies. And I'm gonna show you how it can be fast, easy, and just what you need. And the best part is, I'm gonna show you my top 30 uses for a charcuterie board. Let's have some fun. To start off, we're gonna get a round piece of lumber. I picked this up from Home Depot and it is 17 inches across and it's about an inch thick and it cost me about $13. Now this is unfinished wood, so we are gonna to need to sand it down a little bit. And I picked up some sandpaper from the Dollar Tree. If you wanted to, you could use a sander on this. Now, I like to use the hand sanders. There's not really any point in getting out the electric sander because this isn't, it doesn't need a lot of sanding. And I'm actually amazed at how much sandpaper comes in these little packages from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> it's a great way. I always feel like, why not start with supplies from the Dollar Tree? And if you can't get them there, then go somewhere else. But you can save a lot of money and it comes with all the different grits. Now with this particular project, we don't need to worry about a lot of sanding because it's not real rough. So I'm just gonna get one piece of sandpaper and you can sand directly with this sandpaper right onto the board or you can get one of the sanding blocks. They uh, Sometimes they have them at the Dollar Tree and sometimes they don't. I'm gonna use this sanding block and you definitely want to sand and go with the grain. So you see how the wood grain has, a, it has its lines going? You want to sand towards the grain. And it goes really fast to get the little bumps off. I went ahead and sanded around the edges. I didn't have that on camera. But now I'm going to use a piece of paper. You could use a ruler. I just need a straight edge to mark my lines. Because I want to make some mask I'm going to need to mask off the area that I'm going to tape so that I can get this to look just like my pottery barn dupe that I'm working towards. Now the other thing you can get from the Dollar Tree is your masking tape. I have seen masking tape go as much as eight dollars a roll at some of the other stores so I'm just saying why not pick it up at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> it's not always there so when I see it I grab it that's for sure. Okay, so I'm just gonna mark my lines and I'm actually going with the natural line that's in this wood, which I actually love. I love when there's, you know, wood grain that you can see. And I'm gonna tape right along that line there and tape along the edges because I'm going to paint this around just the top and then on the edges, but not the bottom. I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, and then I decided that my black lines that I'm gonna paint on are gonna be the same width as the masking tape. That's one way to make it very easy to determine what my width of my lines are gonna be. So I'm using my masking tape as my ruler. <laughs> and again, rather than going and grabbing a ruler, everything just goes so fast with this project that I just used a piece of paper to get my straight lines. Now I know that sometimes it might not seem like you need to draw a line, like the masking tape itself is straight, but masking tape will move around and you won't have a perfectly straight line if you don't mark it off. So I'm going to mark the spot and especially two spots on the two different ends and you pull your masking tape tight and you can get your perfectly straight line. So I'm going to have two lines on this so that it matches just like my Pottery Barn dupe. So I'll go ahead and mask the other two lines. But while we're talking about tape and masking off lines for tape and paint, let me give you a painter's tip and trick. And that is how to keep paint from seeping up underneath the masking tape. Now, I don't know if you've ever painted and then you take off your tape and you see paint underneath. I'm gonna give you a, a tip of how to help that to not happen. So, I'm gonna use this acrylic paint that I got from the Dollar Tree, and you can use different types of sponge brushes, but I really like the round brush that you get in the Crafter's Square section of the Dollar Tree, and 
in this particular case, I'm just going to dab rather than brushing paint strokes across because when you brush, a lot of times paint will seep up underneath the masking tape. Now, another trick that you can do if you want an absolutely crisp line that you will never see any kind of seepage going underneath, you can put a line of varnish across it, let it dry, and then paint over it, and then you will not have any seepage. But in this case, because the surface itself is very flat and I'm dabbing, I shouldn't have any problem with seepage. The main time when you have seepage is if you're doing a wall, it adds bumpy areas or some sort of a textured area that you're painting. So there's my tip, painter's tip for the day. <laughs> so dab, 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 that's all it takes and get that paint all the way across. Now I got a little impatient and after my first coat of paint, I went and took a hairdryer to it so it could dry real fast because I wanted two coats of paint on there. But the whole thing got done in about 10 minutes. And so lickety split, that's done. Now all we gotta do is take this tape off and as you'll see as I'm taking this off, I have no problem with any seepage. It is a crisp line since I did my Crafter's Corner Dabbing Brush. <laughs> so there you go, tip of the day. <laughs> Isn't this amazing? I am just amazed. I got a piece of wood, sand it down for a few minutes, put some paint on it, and voila, it's looking just like my pottery barn. <laughs> now, the next thing that I got was some Butcher Block Oil. I picked this up from Walmart. It cost under $6, and I think I'm gonna be able to make about 30 of these charcuterie boards with this much oil. Now, before I put my oil on, I'm gonna show you how you can make a very easy, simple, lazy Susan to go with your charcuterie board. I picked up a couple of pie tins from the Dollar Tree. Yes, my favorite store. And got some marbles. Sometimes they don't have marbles. You can use the those soft stones. You know, if you lay them flat, those will work as well. And you just put them on the bottom and then you can put your board right on the top and it becomes a Lazy Susan. And I wanted to be able to use my Lazy Susan to help me while I'm oiling my charcuterie board. So there we go. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I love it. Okay, now the best part about this Butcher Block Oil is that it's food safe. And it actually dries really fast and you don't have all the stink that you would have, the smelly you know, that you get from varnish or really the mess. I went ahead and wore gloves and used a washcloth to really rub the oil into this wood. And it takes about an hour to dry. And look at, look at how it's looking so similar to my Pottery Barn dupe. I just love it. Now it's still wet, so it will dry a little lighter and then it just is matchy matchy. So it's perfect. The only difference is mine does not have a handle, but I actually prefer it to not have a handle because I like to use it as a with the Lazy Susan. And for all the different things that I use it for, it actually works out better for me. So I prefer it this way. <laughs> I go ahead and put oil all over it from the top, the bottom, the sides, everything gets oiled down really good. Let it dry for an hour. And then I put a second coat on and voila, that's all there is to it. It is the fastest, easiest dupe I have ever done. And it is so rewarding. Now, down the line, in a few months after I've been washing it and using it a lot, I may want to re-oil. You do need to redo your butcher block oil uh, probably every six months or so, depending on how often you're washing it. But it is fantastic. Oh, there's so many possibilities. I'm going to show you my top 30 charcuterie board ideas. And obviously anything goes. But the first thing I want to do is show you how easy it is to make a charcuterie board display. It doesn't have to take a lot of time or effort. Grab some things. I think a nice Martinelli's, maybe some flowers, a couple of glasses, a candy dish. I picked up some candy from the Dollar Tree and a few nuts my love sign from the Dollar Tree, and voila, you have a romantic charcuterie board. Love it. What else? What else? Well, number two, 
How about a hot chocolate station? The thing is, you put anything on this board, and then it looks like it's displayed. It looks fancy. You could have it just sitting on your counter, so it's ready when your kids get home from school. Or maybe you want to do something different every day. You could put it on a table and let everyone have access to the hot chocolate. Love it! My number three and number four have to do with Super Bowl party trays. I love it. You cannot get too many fun ideas to do for parties. Or if you're going to have a party of your own, maybe for Valentine's Day, you want to do some drinks. Or a candy bouquet would be number six. Number seven, don't forget St. Patrick's Day. You got to have a charcuterie board for that. <laughs> number eight, roasted potatoes. Yum! Number nine, Easter delights. Love. Number ten, you can do all different types of skewers. Number eleven, how about Get your popcorn ready for a movie night. Number 12, going all out for Christmas is fantastic. 13, how about the 4th of July? 14, I love different types of fruit and fruit dips. Number 15, different ways to make sandwiches. 16, any side dish looks better when it's displayed on a tray. Even asparagus, yum! Number 17, different vegetables and fruits. 18, pigs in a blanket. Number 19, all different yummy salads. 20, you cannot forget Halloween. 21, do a nacho bar. 22, my personal favorite, mashed potatoes. 23, delicious warm olives. 24, don't forget Grinch dip. 25, can't go without a gnome treat, if you know me. 26, don't forget breakfast. Yum, bagels and spreads. 27, gnome cupcakes. 28, any kind of fancy desserts. 29, ice cream bar. And finally, 30, one delicious charcuterie board. I don't know about you, but my mind's racing with delicious options. Isn't that awesome? I'm telling you, it's so much fun whenever you use Dollar Tree supplies to make things uh, on a tight budget. I love it so much, and I will see you again soon. Oh, don't forget to subscribe and click on this video or this video, and I'll see you soon. See ya!